Proton, Russian, Proton formal designation, Yor 500 is an expendable launch system used for both commercial and Russian government space launches. The first Proton rocket was launched in 1965. Modern versions of the launch system are still in use as of 2019, making it one of the most successful heavy boosters in the history of spaceflight. All Protons are built at the Krunyshev State Research and Production Space Center factory in Moscow, transported to the Baikonur Cosmodrome, brought to the launch pad horizontally, and raised into vertical position for launch. As with many Soviet rockets, the names of recurring payloads became associated with the Proton. The moniker, Proton, originates from a series of similarly named scientific satellites, which were among the rocket's first payloads. During the Cold War, it was designated the D-1, D-1E or SL-12, SL-13 by Western intelligence agencies. Launch capacity to low Earth orbit is about 22.8 tons 50,000 pounds. Geostationary transfer capacity is about 6.3 tons 14,000 pounds. Commercial launches are marketed by International Launch Services ILS. The rocket is intended to be retired before 2030. As of June 2018, production on the Proton rocket is ceasing as the new Angara launch vehicle comes online and becomes operational. No new launch service contracts for Proton are likely to be signed. Topic: History. Proton initially started its life as a Super Heavy ICBM. It was designed to launch a 100 megaton or larger thermonuclear weapon over a distance of 13,000 kilometers. It was hugely oversized for an ICBM and was never deployed in such a capacity. It was eventually used as a space launch vehicle. It was the brainchild of Vladimir Chelomai's design bureau as a foil to Sergei Korolev's N-1 rocket, whose purpose was to send a two-man Zond spacecraft around the moon. Korolev openly opposed Proton and Chelomai's other designs for the use of toxic propellants. The unusual appearance of the first stage results from the need to transport components by rail. The central oxidizer tank is the maximum width for the loading gauge of the track. The six tanks surrounding it carry fuel and serve as the attachment points for the engines. Despite resembling strap-on boosters, they are not designed to separate from the central oxidizer tank. The first and second stages are connected by a lattice structure. The second stage engine ignites shortly before separation of the first stage and the lattice allows the exhaust to escape. A rush development program led to dozens of failures between 1965 and 1972. Proton did not complete its state trials until 1977, at which point it was judged to have a higher than 90% reliability. Proton's design was kept secret until 1986, with the public being only shown the upper stages in film clips and photographs, and the first time the complete vehicle was shown to the outside world happened during the televised launch of Mir. Mass production of guidance, navigation and control system for Proton has begun in 1964 on Communard Industrial Association, Kharkov, Ukraine. Proton launched the unmanned Soviet circumlunar flights and was intended to have launched the first manned Soviet circumlunar spaceflights, before the United States flew the Apollo 8 mission. Proton launched the Salyut space stations, the Mir core segment and expansion modules, and both the Zarya and Svezda modules of the ISS. Proton also launches commercial satellites, most of them being managed by international launch services. The first ILS Proton launch was on 9 April 1996 with the launch of the SES Astra 1F communications satellite. Between 1994 and mid 2010, Proton revenues were $4.3 billion and were projected to grow to $6 billion by 2011. In January 2017, the Proton was temporarily grounded due to the manufacturer, Voronezh Mechanical Plant, having substituted a heat resistant alloy in the engines with a cheaper metal. In June 2018, the State Corporation Roscosmos announced that the Proton rocket would cease production as the new Angara launch vehicle comes online and becomes operational. No new launch service contracts for Proton are likely to be signed. Topic: <laughs> Proton 8K82K. The Grau Index 8K82K version is now usually called Proton K. 
It is fueled by very toxic unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. These are hypergolic fuels which ignite on contact, avoiding the need for an ignition system, and can be stored at ambient temperatures. This avoids the need for components that are tolerant of low temperatures, and allows the rocket to remain on the pad indefinitely. Other launches with such capability include the US Titan II, Titan III, and Titan IV, the Chinese Long March II rocket family and Long March IV rocket family, the Soviet, Ukrainian Cyclone launches, the Soviet, Russian Cosmos III and Cosmos III-M launches and the European Ariane 1 to Ariane 4 launches. In contrast, cryogenic fuels need periodic replenishment as they boil off. The fourth stage has multiple variants, depending on the mission. The simplest, Block D, was used for interplanetary missions. Block D had no guidance module, depending on the probe to control flight. Three different Block DM versions DM, two German marks, and minus two million German marks were for high Earth orbits. The Block D, DM were unusual in that the fuel was stored in a toroidal tank, around the engine and behind the oxidizer tank. The initial proton tests in 1965-66 only used the first two stages of the booster, the complete four-stage vehicle being flown for the first time in 1967. When the Soviet space station program began in 1971, protons began being flown with the Block D removed for use as a heavy-lift LEO launcher. Proton K payloads included all of the Soviet Union Salyut space stations, almost all Mir modules with the exception of the docking module, which was launched on the United States Space Shuttle, and the Zarya and Svezda modules of the International Space Station. It was intended to launch the manned TKS spacecraft, prior to the cancellation of that program, although a few non-manned flights of spacecraft was fulfilled. Also it was intended for proposed in the 1970s LKS spaceplane that never realized. Topic. Proton M The initial version of Proton M could launch 3 to 3.2 tons 6,600 to 7,100 pounds into geostationary orbit or 5.5 tons 12,000 pounds into a geostationary transfer orbit. It could place up to 22 tons pounds in low Earth orbit with a 51.6 degree inclination, the orbit of the International Space Station ISS. The Proton-M's improvements included lower stage modifications to reduce structural mass, increase thrust, and fully use propellants. Generally a Breeze-M Russian, Breeze meaning Breeze storable propellant upper stage is used instead of the Block D or Block DM stage, removing the need for multiple fuel supplies and oxygen top-off due to boiling. The Proton-M also flew with a Block DM upper stage. Efforts were also made to reduce dependency on foreign usually Ukrainian component suppliers. Proton launch vehicles and Breeze-M upper stages are designed and built by Krunyshev State Research and Production Space Center Krunyshev in Moscow, the majority owner of International Launch Services ILS. The center is home to all engineering, assembly and test functions of proton production. With the recent consolidation of the Russian space enterprises, Krunyshev has direct oversight and control of up to 70% of all proton manufacturing from suppliers to manufacturers. The consolidation directly supports Khrunichev's ongoing efforts for vertical integration of proton production. An enhanced variant, the Phase 3 Proton M, Breeze M launch vehicle, was flight proven on the Russian Federal dual mission of Express AM 44 and Express MD 1 in February 2009 and performed its first commercial launch in March 2010 with the EchoStar 14 satellite. The Proton M Breeze M Phase 3 configuration provides 6,150 kg of GTO performance, an increase of 1,150 kg over the original Proton M Breeze M, while maintaining the fundamental design configuration. On 6 August 2012, the Russian Federal Space Agency lost a Russian and an Indonesian communications satellite in an attempt to launch them into orbit on a Proton M due to technical difficulties with the last stage. On 2 July 2013, a Proton-M launching three GLONASS navigation satellites experienced a failure reminiscent of the 1960s disasters shortly after liftoff when the booster crashed near LC-39 at Baikonur, ending a 30-year unbroken stretch without a first-stage failure. All future Proton flights were suspended pending investigation. 
The accident was eventually determined to be caused by the rate gyro package having been installed upside down. Due to the difficulty of installing the package incorrectly, it was widely suspected that it had been done deliberately by a disgruntled or drunk worker at the Krunishev plant. On 15 May 2014, a Proton M, Breeze M carrying an Express satellite suffered a third stage failure from a bad turbopump bearing. Debris fell in Manchuria. On 21 October, another Express satellite was left in a useless orbit when the Breeze stage cut off 24 seconds too early. On 16 May 2015, a MEXSAT communications satellite failed to orbit due to another third stage malfunction, the eighth proton failure since 2010. Khrunichev has initiated development of a set of Phase IV enhancements in order to keep pace with market demands and the mass growth trends of commercial satellites. The implementation of Phase IV Proton Breeze M enhancements were completed in 2016. The payload mass performance for Phase 4 has been increased to 6,320 kg to a reference GTO orbit with 1,500 m per second of residual delta-5 to GSO. Launches Future developments Significant upgrades were temporarily put on hold following announcement of the new Angara launch vehicle. The single largest upgrade was the KVRB stage. This cryogenic stage would have greatly increased capacity. The engine was developed successfully, and the stage as a whole had progressed to hardware. However, as KVRB is noticeably larger than Block D, the vehicle's aerodynamics, flight control, software, and possibly electronics would have to be re-evaluated. In addition, the launch pad can supply existing protons with common hypergolic fuels from single sources. The upper stages, in particular, are fed by common loading pipes running along the rocket. Switching to a stage with different fuels requires the addition of extra support articles. Switching to cryogens requires that such support articles top off the stage periodically. Heavy variants of Angara will be simpler and cheaper than Proton, and like the Atlas V rocket, will not use hypergolic fuels. Instead, it will use the same RP 1 fuel as that used on the Soyuz rocket. They will also be designed from the start to accept a KVTK stage, and will already have a LOX supply at the pad, only a hydrogen supply will be called upon. Topic. See also Comparison of orbital launches families Comparison of orbital launch systems Topic. Similar launch systems Delta IV Heavy Atlas V Heavy Ariane 5 Long March 5 Angara A5 Falcon 9 HIIB Saturn I and IB.